What is up to all my photographer friends out there? Charlie Pang is here. Today I'm going to show you guys how you can make your own photography logo free using Photoshop. You don't have to use Photoshop if you don't want to. I know I'm doing it in Photoshop today, but you can use other design programs that are much cheaper like Affinity Designer and all that stuff. But this is a great video because I'm going to show you guys how to find the right fonts for your photography logo and also show you guys how to use the font in Photoshop to make a really, really cool looking logo. So without further ado, let's go and hop on the computer and get started. <laughs> All right guys, so we're in Photoshop and we're ready to start making a really cool logo. Now, don't stress if you don't have Photoshop. Like I said before, there are so many other options out there that you can use besides Photoshop. There's a newer program called Affinity Designer and it's only 50 bucks guys and you don't have to pay a subscription on it. So that's always an option. But if you do have Photoshop or at least the trial of Photoshop, you guys can do this right now. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be finding a really cool font off of a website. We're gonna be using that font in Photoshop. We're gonna be taking that font and basically constructing a logo out of it using your name or your photography company, whatever you want it to be. So mine in this case is John Doe. I just use John Doe because it's a shorter name and it looks nice. And I put photography under it as you guys can see right here. So we're gonna be taking that same concept today. I'm gonna to be recreating it. Obviously you guys can use your own name when we're doing this. So let's not blabber on too long. Let's go ahead and go to the internet and find the font that we want. So we're gonna go ahead and go to dafont.com. This is not the only font site, keep in mind. There's so many other font sites out there, but this is the one that's more popular and it's really easy to navigate and use. So um, once you go to dafont.com, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to the right here and we're gonna go to handwritten, okay? The cool thing about the site is it allows us to actually type in our name or whatever that we want to preview before downloading the font. So we can go to the preview menu here and just type in John Doe. John Doe just like that. So once you hit enter, you're gonna see that all the fonts are gonna change to the name that you typed in in the preview box. And that's really great because now it's gonna give us a good idea of what each font is gonna look like with our name. And that's what we want. So we're just gonna keep scrolling down. I already found a font that I like and I use Taken by Vultures. If you scroll down just a little bit on the first page, you'll see it. So I use Taken by Vultures, but you do not have to use this font. You can download any font you want or you can keep browsing the site for other types of fonts. I just really like the cursive look so that's why I'm going with Taken by Vultures because it's a really nice hand-drawn signature look and that's what I really like. So um, all you have to do is actually click download and obviously I already downloaded this but if you have not downloaded this font, you click download, you extract it and you just basically double click on the font and I'll show you how to do that real quick even though I already downloaded it. So we're just going to extract it and then we're going to double click on it and install both of them. And you'll see, once you double click on it, you'll see the install menu pop up and you just hit install. So that's all you have to do. And on Mac, it's actually even easier than that. You just double click on it just like I just did and it will um, do the same type of process, but I don't think you have to extract it on a Mac. But um, I don't, I'm not sure because I haven't had a Mac in a while, but I'm pretty sure it's a lot easier on a Mac. Now we can actually pull up Photoshop and start using this font. So as you guys can see, I already have a document pulled up and the document really doesn't matter on sizing. It just has to be good enough quality to use as a logo. So what you would want to do is you want to go to File New and we're gonna set up a new document real quick. So we're just gonna to go to File New. Once you see the new document window pop up, what we're gonna do is switch it from pixels to inches and we're gonna do 20 by 15 at 300 resolution. Once you do all that, you can click Create. And once you click Create, it's gonna create your document. Now obviously I already have one, so I'm just gonna close that out. So once you create that new document, you're ready to go. You can use your font. So we're gonna hit T on the keyboard or just go to our T tool here and that's gonna allow us to type text on our canvas here, uh, the new document that we created. So um, I'm just gonna click once and then I'm gonna type out John. And it's not gonna be in the font I want, so I just need to change a couple things. Like I have my letter spacing all out of whack, so what I wanna do is go to my little um, character palette up here, and I just want to um, change the VA spacing to zero real quick, and that's all I had to do. Now, this is one of the fonts we are gonna be using today, but the first font I wanna use is Taken by Vultures, which is the one we obviously just downloaded. So I'm just gonna basically raise the font size real quick. And if you guys are lost, just copy exactly what I'm doing. I have a lot of um, love-hate relationships on my channel with taking too long to do things and explaining too much. So 
Um, I really don't know how to please everybody, so I'm just doing it the way I think is fine. And um, I'm going at the pace I think is good for everybody. So um, if you don't like it, I'm really sorry. I can't please everybody. So I have John typed out using the font that I just downloaded, which is taken by Vultures, and we're just gonna duplicate it. So we're just gonna hold an Alt and drag to the right, and we're gonna duplicate that. Or we could just right click on the name and duplicate it that way as well. On the top, you'll see duplicate, but we're not gonna do that because we just duplicated it. But that is an option if you guys don't know shortcuts. Um, so I have John as a copy. Now I need to type out Doe. So we're just gonna type out Doe. And as you can see, this font really fits nicely together. It's it's nicely constructed, and it's you know there's not a lot of editing that we have to do to make this look better. So it's actually looking really good um, right off the bat. So I like that. So one thing I could do is I can group this and center it, just like that. And now I want to type out photography because I want the photography to be at the bottom. So we're just gonna make another text line here, and we're gonna type out photography in all caps. So type it out in all caps. And it's gonna look pretty gross, but we're gonna use another font that I have downloaded. You guys can find this font online. It's called Edmund Sans. I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure. I might be butchering it. So I typed out photography. I'm using a, a font called Edmund Sans. And it, the reason why I'm using this one versus other ones is because this one's nice and thin. And I like that because it contrasts nice with John Doe's font, which is the, um, the Vulture font. And with that font, it's a lot thinner. So I don't want my photography font to be thicker than the, the name font, if that makes sense. I want the name to pop out more. So that's why I'm going with the thinner font for the photography text. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag it and kind of put it in place. And what I wanna do is actually change the letter spacing. So if I go to my little um, folder here, it's gonna pop up my character palette and we can change the line spacing. But an even easier way to do this is by selecting the entire text line or double clicking the thumbnail here and holding an alt and just hitting the right arrow and you'll see it actually space out just like that. And the reason why I like doing that is because it's a lot faster and then I can actually resize it doing control T. So we have the photography now and it's looking really good. Now you don't have to space your letters out that much. That's really up to you. I just think it looks really cool and it really looks um, nice because it fills out that gap at the bottom of John Doe. If I were to make it any smaller, it would kind of look out of place, I think. Stretching it from the J to the end of the E really makes the logo look more full. So that's the reason why I went with that. But again, experiment with the guys and see what um, works for you. The next thing I would like to do before I finish this is just kind of like drag photography down a little bit, give it some breathing room because it's too close to the D and I don't like that. But we're gonna stop it there. So we have John Doe Photography. You guys can do it with your own name using a simple font. And the cool thing about this is those fonts are free to use. It's important to note that you can use this font for personal use, especially if you're just putting it on your photos on one of the corners or something. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that right now. But if you're using it for like huge projects in an actual company and you wanna trademark it, you would need to actually purchase rights to this uh, font or you guys can find a font that's completely free to use it's just important to note because when you download these fonts you want to make sure they're good for commercial use and for personal use basically everything and some of them will actually uh, come with a document that says what kind of licensing you get when you download it so just pay attention to that but it's not a big deal at all so the next thing we want to do is we want to actually save this as a PNG so we can use it later on so what I'm gonna do is um, drag photography into my group I created and we're gonna enlarge this so it's nice and big just like that, center it and everything like that. And now what we can do is we can actually hide the background and as you can see it's transparent now and we can go up to File, Save As and we can save this to our desktop as John Doe. John Doe, I messed that up. And um, you can actually do underscore logo, whatever, just so you know it's a logo. And we can change it from Photoshop file to PNG. And it, you also wanna save it as a Photoshop file so you can mess with it later on if you want to. But in this case, we're gonna save it as a PNG and we're just gonna click save. After you hit save, you're gonna see this PNG options menu pop up. You can just go to smallest to slow or none. It really doesn't matter. I'm not gonna get technical on that. Just keep it at whatever it's at and then click okay. Now you have a PNG photo. All right guys, so we have our logo and let's say we just took a photo the other day and we wanna use this logo on our photo. This is really easy. So um, you guys already have it on your desktop. So what you can do is you can go to open in Photoshop and pull up the logo here. So you, what you're gonna get is this logo without a background, so that's perfect. Now what we could do is we could drag it onto our photo that we want it on, and as you can see, it's not the right color, so we can actually invert it by doing Control I, or you could just add a color overlay to it by going to the effects, adding a color overlay, and at that point, you can make it whatever color you want. I'm just gonna keep it as white, and then what we could do is resize it, just like that, 
and we could drag it in place. So that is a perfect way to brand your photos. Look at that, guys. We just made a logo in a matter of minutes. We slapped it on one of our photos we took the other day. Not really, but you know what I mean. And now we have a cool looking photo here with our brand on it. Just like that, we created a photography logo using some free fonts that we found on dafont.com and we used Photoshop to put it all together. So now you guys can actually take the logo you made as a PNG and slap it on all your photos, change the color of it, spice it up a little bit, and really add that personal touch to your photos now that you didn't have before. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Charlie Pangus. Send me a message, say hi, whatever you want to do. I'm always active on there. But that is it for me guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.